without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, here is the incredible Nikolai Costavaldo! In German, do you think that would work, Nicolai? Well, we could, but it would be very short. <laughs> Man, so many of these people are here to see you. Oh, so amazing with the dragon and with the Pixelmunda. How cool was that? I know, I know. Did you, did you learn something new watching the dress? Yeah, I, was there, I thought I was going to go find that booth. <laughs> the school and all that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, that is you. Very big up on screen. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here, Nikolai. It's our honor to have you. And um, this is our first edition of the CCXP Cologne. Did you have some time to look around? I did. Yeah? Did, yeah. You, did you like what you okay. see? It looks very, it's very uh, professional. It's very impressive. <laughs> cool. So obviously we would, we would love to talk with you about Jamie. I can imagine this is a role that really changed your life. Is it? Um, <laughs> I don't know if it's changed my life. It was a great role. I, I would say uh, other things change your life. Uh, time, and family, and friends, and uh, but it was a fantastic uh, series to be a part of. And I met some some wonderful people. We had you know great colleagues, uh, and obviously uh, to experience uh, the success of, of that show has been uh, overwhelming. And, uh, just to be here now and know you, you guys, it's, uh, I still find it quite insane. <laughs> but it's fun. But I don't, I mean, changing your life, I, I don't know. I, I think if, if, you know, you think back 10 years when, when we started, it's 10 years now unless we start shooting the pilot. Yeah, my life has changed. But I think if you could think back 10 years, you would also think, yeah, your life changed. I don't know what caused it. Um, does that make sense? No? Absolutely, that absolutely makes sense. Um, so, do you remember your first script reading with the other cast? And back then, would you have thought that Jamie and this whole show would become that big? No, <laughs> nobody imagined. I, I remember the first reading at the pilot. It was quite tense. We had um, three cameras shooting, and they told us before they said, "This is just um, this is just for like behind the scenes." Because you think that well, they're going to cut someone, and they said, "No, no, no, we're not going to cut." Next day, two actors lost their jobs. <laughs> so, so um, <laughs> it was. Uh, but listen, we didn't expect it. Uh, we shot the pilot, the original pilot. Uh, we had to reshoot most of it because it was not very good. We actually, at the premiere of the last season, the original cast members got together and, uh, and Dan and Dan Weiss and David Benioff, the creators, they showed us the original pilot and I really hope it will never be shown <laughs> to anyone. <laughs> That's uh, it's been so bad. <laughs> Jamie is such a special character because at the beginning you think like, oh, okay. And He's one of the only ones with a known name that you remember. I mean, the other, all the other guys, you kind of have to, to watch three or four episodes because you go, what? That is true also. And Baris, <laughs> Baris, Tyrion, anyway, go ahead. Sorry. And, and that, oh, that's fine. And Jamie, he has such a, a special development that he makes. Um, what is it you really, really like about this character? Well, I, I like, I mean, I think one of the great things about the show and about this character is the, uh, the nuances that, that uh, I remember reading the, the first script and, you know, at the end of the script she's having sex with his sister and tries to kill an innocent boy and I thought this is a fantastic way to start a character because how can you like someone like that? He's just uh, horrible. He's got no morals and all these things. And then, of course, I spoke to to the creators, and, and they explained the first three seasons. So the whole thing about don't judge a book by its cover, I think, applies to Jamie. That you find out over the years that 
the whole Kingslayer um, name he's been given is yeah he killed the king but he actually he actually did it for quite good reasons you know to, uh, to stop a genocide from happening um, and uh, and yes you should not have uh, that kind of relation with your sister but he kind of he loves her and, you know and then you can relate to the whole idea of falling in love with someone you shouldn't fall in love with. Um, and, and he's actually a very loyal man and he, he, I think he has a lot of good qualities. And I love the idea that you have to find out through the, through the years. Um, and then of course later on he has such a great uh, arc with, um, with uh, Brienne of Tarth, which is it was the wonderful bonus. We all lived with the characters of Game of Thrones. Why did he not? Why did he leave her again? Why did he? Exactly! Right? Uh, I think we all thought that. Is that something where, where you went like, oh, have I, did they write the script like that? Or did you think, well, they probably had reasons why they wrote it like this? What script was it? If, if it was up to you, would he have stayed with her? Oh, no, it was up to me. Yeah, if, if you want to do what was good for him, like that. No, but we all know people when we look at the relationship, you go, this is fucked up. I mean, please, you got to leave him or leave her. It would be so much better for you. But you, you can only walk your own shoes. And then and for Jamie, I don't, me personally, looking at the show, I don't think there was any, he didn't have a choice. He had to go back to Cersei. Even though we were like, no, god damn it, it's so painful. Um, I thought it was, I thought it made sense, uh, sense, and I thought it was beautiful, and I thought it was, I really liked the fact that, because everybody wanted Cersei dead, and I loved the idea that at the very end, when she does die, it does leave you with a kind of a bitter taste in your mouth, which is great. I mean, yeah, well, I'm sure we're going to get to the uh, final season questions. <laughs> oh, well, since you brought it up. <laughs> but, uh, but think about it this way. I remember, it's been like this every season, more or less. I remember season one, uh, Ned Stark died after episode nine air. People went crazy. We were never going to watch this piece of shit show again. It's the worst thing. How could you kill Ned Stark? He's the hero. God damn you, HBO, my subscription has been cancelled. And then the ratings went up. And after episode three of season eight, people did an online petition. And a million people signed up and the week after the ratings went up. I'm not I'm not saying there's anything right or wrong. I'm just saying I love it's a it really is and it sounds weird maybe. I thought it was wonderful with all the passion. I know for some of my colleagues it was a little difficult. To be honest, they found it difficult to deal with. For for who? Exactly. <laughs> Give us names. Please. Give us names. No, but it was it was uh, you know the thing about when you're online and you get passionate about something, you kind of forget that there are recipients sometimes. Those that's the beauty of social media. Um, did you did you hear about the online petition for Stranger Things? By the way, I haven't. You guys? <laughs> it was. Uh, because you had the big Game of Thrones, then there was an online petition for Netflix had to cancel Good Omens. And, uh, and Netflix tweeted out saying, done, you're right, we're gonna, we're gonna cancel Good Omens. Then Amazon tweeted out, uh, okay, well we will cancel Stranger Things then. So the people who did this whole petition didn't know that Good Omens was not on Netflix. It was uh, a show from Amazon. But, uh, but you can still get carried away. I know that thing, I read something on Facebook, yes, it's terrible. I have no idea what it is, but it sounds bad. Anyway, where were we? You, you were asking yeah. me questions and I started talking and we... We, I, I think since you brought it up, we like have to talk about last season and yes. last episodes. We all lived with your characters so long. For well, let me say one thing, because yeah. like, I was then thinking about this. Every year between seasons, after season, Four, five, when we went off book. Nobody knew what was going to happen. Uh, us actors, right? And I always 
I hate that. I like to know what's going to happen next. So of course you spend a year imagining what's going to happen. I think you might know the feeling. It's like you imagine, well, I think Jamie's going to do this, and when he finds out, that's going to. And then I get the script, and of course it's nothing like what I imagined. So why every year I spend a week or two weeks being really frustrated and having to talk to the writers and say, why are we doing this? And I don't understand that. And then slowly I realize, well, there is no alternative reality. There is only that script. So that that's means now that everything is finished, are you satisfied with your ending? Yeah, Jamie's ending. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Of course. Yeah, but, yeah, I'm satisfied. I mean, I, it's the ending. It's, uh, my point is, there is no, there is no alternative. There is not like, you know, it's not going to do another uh, season eight. I mean, it's, it's what it is. And, and I think if you watch the whole thing in one go and not have to, to wait two years, it, uh, it will grow on you. I mean, having said that, I mean, I, I've, there's a lot of people who, who kind of liked it, who didn't. <laughs> but I understand there are people that were unhappy with it. Especially the ones that named their daughters Daenerys, because she was the hero of the <laughs> turned into. But I, I still find that a little surprising that you didn't see that one coming. I mean, that was, she kind of, uh, I mean, a girl who was given away to a pretty, uh, and, and violently raped. And then he has, she had the most extreme sy the Stockholm Syndrome I've ever seen. And then had her brother killed in front of her and she didn't really... That was like, oh yeah, well, he was a bit of an asshole, so he deserved that. <laughs> I mean, she had issues. Yes, she did. <laughs> anyway, but I know, I understand if you have a little daughter, it's called Daenerys, and suddenly you have to explain her why she Bye. can't play with fire anymore. Do you remember shooting that scene? Yeah, we shot in Spain in a place called Catharis, outside of Catharis. It was amazing. It was three, four weeks. I loved that, that whole. I mean, it was so much fun. And the whole, the whole episode was one of my favorite episodes of the season. The, the, that action sequence was uh, just the execution. Um, I love horses and. and and the horse wranglers uh, on, on Game of Thrones were just some of the best. Uh, the, the stun guys, I mean, they were standing on horseback and coming down the Dothraki before this. Um, it, it was, uh, yeah, one of my best memories from, from shooting. And we saw Peter Dinklage on screen. Yes. I absolutely love the relationship between your two characters. That was like a highlight for me. Do you still keep the Romans alive? Yes, of yeah, course. Sure. <laughs> yes. No, no, I mean, we have, that's, I mean, we, there are, you know, a lot of friendships, um, and, and uh, that's not going to go away. And when you have had an experience, like, if you share 10 years together on something like this, I think that's always going to be a bond, uh, unbreakable. So, uh, Lena, either, Jerome, you know. Gwendolyn, of course, it's uh, a lot of great friends. I would love to give our audience the chance to ask you some questions also, because I'm yes, sure there are a lot of people who have some interesting questions. Do we have a microphone? Yes, we do, perfect. Hello, nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Calvin from Brazil. And I would like to ask uh, a question that's still related to the episode 5 from season 8 where Jamie makes the decision to go back to Cersei. And it was the, during a long time there was this theory during, uh, around the fandom about the Valonqar that Jamie will be the one actually killing Cersei. It was between him and Tyrion. Uh, do you feel that the way that actually ended, the way that actually the, both of your characters ended up would be, uh, I don't know, it will be diff how, how much it would be for you if actually that prophecy would be the actual ending? Um, thank, thank you for the question. I came all the way from Brazil. 
There are a lot of ideas, you know, there's so many ways you could go. I think, I, I like the simplicity, and I like the, the truthfulness to that. And I think that uh, the fact is that for a moment, he, 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 uh, he tried to live the dream of what, what if, what if I could cut the ties. Clearly there's a real connection with this Rianne. Um, what if I could just close my eyes and the past was, would be gone, but the woman, you know, the woman that he shared his life with, he had three kids with, another one coming, is about to get overrun and killed by, you know, the rest of the world. It's impossible for him not to try and go back. So I, I think it made sense. I thought, I always imagined in my mind that it was going to be uh, Arya disguised as Jane who would do it, right? I thought, wow, oh, that's cool, because clearly we've seen so much of this face swapping, we're going to get there. But I think, as I said before, there's all these alternatives. You, you, we could all, and I'm sure all of us here could think of a hundred different cool endings or different variations. The thing is, there are only two or well, three guys who are writing this, and this is how what they came up with, and there is no alternative. This is it. And I thought it made sense, and I thought it was a beautiful, sad ending. Uh, my favorite ending, last scene with Jamie, is without Jamie, is actually the scene with uh, Gwendolyn, I mean, with Brienne of Tarth, when she's the uh, command of the King's Guard, when she's filling in the blanks in, in the book. I thought that was very moving. Yeah. Absolutely. We have one more question. There is my over there. Perfect. Um, hello, Sir Nikolai. It is very nice to meet you. I came all the way from Indonesia just to see you. Well, I think that's like the first round of applause. Actually, uh, me and my wife are a huge fan of yours since season three, obviously. And uh, I don't have any question. I just you don't mind, can you say hi to my wife and yeah. like send his regards? As where, where is she? She is back in Jakarta, in Indonesia. Is she watching this? Yes, uh, no, I will send the video. Okay, okay. Her name oh, she's there, the video is next to you. Hey, wife. <laughs> her, her, her name is uh, Mendy. Mendy, can you please say hi? Hi, Mendy. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. Your wife will love you now you're four, I think. One question over here. Hello. Yes, hi. Nice to meet you. I want to know if there are um, yeah, any character traits of Jamie that are similar to you. Any traits? Uh, we, 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 we look alike. Okay. <laughs> I actually... Nothing else. <laughs> I had a guy come up to me last week and said, listen, you could make a lot of money being Jamie Lannister's photo <laughs> And I thought, yeah, yeah I'm doing that. Um, Trace, no, I think that, um, um, I am, I'm, I think I'm pretty loyal uh, when it comes to, and family is very important to me. Um, and also, I hate uh, when people uh, jump to conclusions about who I am, based on what they've heard of. Stuff like that, and I so, but there's a lot of things that are quite different. Hi. I guess it was, um, thank, thank you for the question. Um, well, it's a combination of, of, you have to have some luck, and I guess a little bit of talent, and then you have to be, have a lot of perseverance. Uh, I never, the beauty of being really young, when, when I was young, back when I was young, is that you have no idea 
that things are not going to work out like that. You just, well, I was just assumed that obviously this is going to, it's going to work out. And so it took me years to realize that and thousands of rejections before I, I started doubting that. And then suddenly I got, you know, I, I got breaks. And, but I don't think there is a, there is not a formula. You just have to crack at it. That's what I love about Comic Cons. You sit there watching out and suddenly there's a person with horns walking past. Oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. No Hello. worries. Um, so my question would be, what were the biggest challenges filming on Game of Thrones and what are maybe skills that you had to learn to be Jamie? Um, it's, I, well, I guess when, once he lost his hand, that, that, uh, not the... Not using my left hand, that's fine, but just hiding my right hand that became a, in the first few seasons. Until I got my golden hand, I, was, I kept finding new ways to, to hide my hand. I mean, I, you know, you, you learn something all the time. Yes, you have, of course, there's a lot of horseback riding. I knew some before I got better at doing it. Um, it the challenge is, of, is always just getting, getting it to work. Um, and, uh, and the funny thing is, you would think it got easier. I always, I always felt like every season it was as if I was starting all over. That it, it uh, who is this guy? I don't understand it. I mean, that's just, um, so that was the challenge. And, and of course, with the success of something, you don't want to, you don't want to let people down. Uh, so I think there was a lot of pressure on all of us, especially going into the last season. Everybody, including the crew, was so focused and, determined um, and so yeah but I mean challenges are good where is the microphone right now Thanks. over there perfect hey I like your outfit <laughs> thanks a lot <laughs> Real family. Are your kids into Game of Thrones? Because my kids had me ending up like this. <laughs> so you're asking me, am I my own family? Exactly. Are they sitting there at the dining table and saying, Dad, why this and this and this theory and who is going to kill whom? Oh. Or is it just something they don't care about because this is your everyday business life? Yes. They could not care less about <laughs> their dad's job. Which is good. And then my wife uh, saw the pilot back in the day, and she still has to go and watch episode two. So. No but way. But she'll do that as soon as she has time. She keeps telling me. It's all good. Hello. Is that Brienne behind you there? Yeah. That's very She's cool. Great. Very cool. <laughs> okay, sorry. Hi. Hello. I'm from Brazil also. Very good seeing you. Well, nice and, to meet you. Uh, I love Jamie's history, redemption story. But the question I have is, if you were not playing around the show, what character would you play? I was not a Lannister. Well, it, I guess, hypothetically... Well, first of all, I would be kind of disappointed. <laughs> no, no, I don't know. I think that they're all great. Um, I don't know. The wild thing. They seem to have the most fun. And the free folk, right? That's where we want to be. Thank you. Over there. Hello. First of all, I want to say thank you for portraying James Logan and you. You were amazing. Thank you. My question is, if you could talk about uh, the relationship between Jamie and Brienne, what do you think? Do you think you truly loved her? Brienne? Um, what's the, uh, the phrase we've been using for eight years? It's complicated. I think, it, I think he, he, I think it's difficult for him to, to recognize love, even if it kicked him in the nuts, um, because he's, he's been through a lot. I think he has, I think he did love her, but he also couldn't stay with her. Also, he also loves Cersei, there's no question about it. So, um, 
Yeah. In a parallel universe, they would be skipping down through the beautiful meadow right now. <laughs> yeah. Where are we? Oh, there we are. Hi, my name is Sofia. I'm actually from Cyprus, which is not as far as Indonesia or Brazil, but you know. Very impressive. Yeah, thank you. So I was wondering, how did you find the ending of who became king? And if you agreed with that, or if you thought someone else would have been a better choice? I, I always thought they should get rid of the Iron Throne, so I thought that was pretty cool with the melting of the throne. I also... Uh, I guess that Bran would become the king years ago, because I thought, like, well, he's probably going to be the one. He's going to be a star. I like the... I mean, the whole... They, they divided the power between the north and the... I don't know. I mean... It's difficult to argue with Brian because he kind of knows everything. So, <laughs> but uh, I, it, it had to end. So that was an ending. And there's, <laughs> I don't know. I don't have an opinion. I think it was great. Um, yeah. Oh, here we go. Hello. First of all, thank you for coming to Germany. Thank you. Um, well, I forgot my question. Wait. <laughs> this is actually really weird talking kind of to you. So, um, okay, let me just have it. What was your very worst fan encounter besides of me, obviously, because I'm rambling still, but maybe a really awkward situation with that? Um, no, this is great. No, I, I don't have, I haven't had any bad fan encounters. I've had some. I've had a few of, of where you go, that's uh, bad timing. <laughs> For example? But, well, coming out of the bathroom, I, I mean, yesterday I was in a restaurant and I, I, I just opened the door from the stall and there was a guy saying, can I please have a picture? <laughs> and I just felt my hand check, did I unzip my, I mean, I was like, did I, um, <laughs> Did you take a picture with him? We went outside. I said, can we just go outside? <laughs> but, no, I, no. I mean, I, I don't... I mean, I mean, if... I mean, the thing is, if you... Sometimes you might not feel like doing a selfie. Um, but then I just say, I don't feel like it. And then I haven't had anyone go, you have to! Because people understand that. We all, we all understand that, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, if you're with my family, I'm, I'm just saying, no, 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 Oh, yeah, but then there's the one I, I think I mentioned, if you, there was a couple of, that had happened twice in the gym, in, while I was naked in the shower, when someone asked for a picture. Well, that's a little bit uncomfortable, right? I just, I just started laughing, I thought it was <laughs> hilarious. Anyway, next question. <laughs> Hello, my name is Nina. Thank you for being here. And my question would be, what was the most exhausting part uh, while filming? Was it not night shift or anything else? The most exhausting... We shot this the end of season 7. There's this big get-together between all the, the West Coast people, clans, families. I don't know if you remember. The, and uh, Jon Snow just been to collect a specimen of, uh, of those thing, and we have to show that to Cersei and anyway it took like 10 days to shoot and it was, it was the weather was like it is in Cologne today. That was just, that was agony. Because <laughs> it was so boring, we were just sitting there waiting, right? So, um, no, but most of the time it's actually a lot of fun on Game of Thrones. Uh, I'm gonna miss, gonna miss? I'm suddenly realizing I'm going to miss that. Oh, it's going to be fine. Okay. <laughs> so we actually have one scene to watch, but we could oh. also do questions. I think it's pretty much up to our audience line, right? Do you guys want to do questions? Do you have more questions? I think there's someone... Yeah, let's, then let's uh, take this beautiful girl over there with the microphone. Hello. Is that Daenerys? Yes, hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> My name is Santi. Nice to have you here. 
Um, I have a question about traveling. You have traveled a lot to different countries because of shooting Game of Thrones. Which one was your favorite place to be? Um, I thought you were going to ask me for like, what airline should I go with? Uh, no, I, we, we shot in, in um, I shot in Spain, in Croatia, in Northern Ireland. Uh, that was for me. And then the show also went to Malta and Iceland. I love, I mean, it sounds, it's not a very good, I love the old places. Um, the most, I mean, Belfast was the home of Game of Thrones. Uh, Northern Ireland is just, just a wonderful place. Uh, so, if I had to pick a place, it would have to be Belfast and Northern Ireland. What is the, what is the clip? I'm so curious. Anyway. Oh. Go ahead. Yes. Hello. Hello. Good to have you here. Um, first off, I met Lina in Munich two weeks ago and she asked me to send you her lovely greetings. Thank you. And my question is about the final scene between Jenny and Cersei. Um, that is the clip, by the way, just so you know. That is actually yeah, is the clip. Like <laughs> um, so, if you would have more time as Jenny, what would you do or say to her just in that final moment? Thank you. Um, <laughs> I don't know. What's for lunch? What's going on? Um, <laughs> um, it was. Um, it was. A, I mean, we had. It, it was a wonderful ending to be with Lena. That, that, that when we shot that scene. Um, and also, I was like, yeah, maybe I should say, hey, should, should we go back upstairs? Should we just get out of here? I don't know. I don't think they they said it's just you. I think it was perfect the way that look at me. It's just you, me, no one else, just us. How emotional is it watching that scene for you? How do you feel right now after seeing this? <laughs> no, I feel uh, no. I think it, it. You know, I I watch it. I just I remember back to shooting um, and. Uh, it's, it was such an amazing set that they, I mean, everything was, was built as you saw it. Um, I mean, that's, you, I forgot his, his name, the, the visual effects. Mike. Mike, you know, and, 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 and there are thousands of people like him working, working on the show, and, and, and you, you just, I really appreciate um, the achievement. Um, and of course, nobody should think about that when they watch it. But but I do because I I, I was there, and uh, so so seeing a sequence like that, it's just a, a real sense of pride to be part of something uh, that was so well produced and, and created. And I understand you always discuss uh, story points, but uh, on a technical level, I, I think it's going to be very difficult for a long time to surpass. Game of Thrones is such an important show for so many people here and we are so honored that you have been here today. It has been a pleasure. Thank you for answering all our questions. And I think you'll hang around, take a couple of pictures, right? Sign some autographs? Yes, I'm going to go take some pictures. Do you guys want a picture with Nikolai Casavaldo? Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for coming for this uh, Q&A. And, uh, and stay inside the air conditioning. <laughs> See you later. Please give it up one more time. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Michael Tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cheryl.